So let's analyze our statements now with SQL Performance Analyzer. And the data sheet for SQL Performance Analyzer tells you SPA provides fine-grained assessment of environment changes on SQL execution and statistics. By running the SQL statements in isolation, that means it's a test execution mode, a sandbox mode, and serially, one after another, in before change and after change environments. So we have the information from before, and now we want to simulate after change, after upgrade, but it could also be after patching or after changing the optimizer mode parameter from all rows to first rows 100. So SPA is not only focused on use it for upgrades and migrations. You can use it, and actually we try to educate customers when they have the license, because it's extra licensable functionality, when they have the license <clears throat> to use it basically as a standard tool, even when you roll out application changes. Extra license, keyword, yes, and it's not the cheapest option we have, but what's really cool is you can use that in the cloud, in most cloud deployments. So as we explained before already, have a hybrid data guard, build up a test environment in the cloud, use SPA there, and once you're done with your testing, burn it down and implement the changes, the learnings on on-prem environments. So even if you don't have it, the cloud here is really a good way of using the feature. <clears throat> Let me explain it. In this case, we have a 11204 environment. And what we do is, or what we did already in our workflow, we created a SQL tuning set with the production workload. So that SQL tuning set has now our SQL, our execution statistics, our binds, all we need, and the plans. We upgrade our test system. And if you go to a new operating system platform with a migration and you don't upgrade, then make sure you export the SQL tuning set in a staging table and you move it to your migrated system. So now we are there. We have all that information in the SQL tuning set. And what do we do with the SQL tuning set? After upgrade, after change, we give it to the SQL performance analyzer. And a SQL performance analyzer does now a test execution. It simulates these statements. Very important, it's a simulation. It's non-destructive. We can repeat this now a thousand times if we want to. If you want to test all init aura parameters through, feel free. This feature allows you doing that. So we have now before upgrade, after upgrade, <clears throat> and we have now several categories like elapsed time, CPU time, buffer gets discrete, and so on. And we have the plans from before and the simulation after. So what do we do with that information? We compare. And for comparison, we have regressed reports. There are other reports available as well, but I personally find the regressed reports the most helpful ones because I have my regressed statements. I'm happy if 10,000 of my statements perform better than before, but I'm interested in these five mean guys who misbehave. And we want to identify them, of course, before we go live. This is the idea. So you see in the middle of the slide, two columns, trial one and trial two. In my case, the trial one is not really a trial because this is what I collected already on production. This is the live information from my production. And now SQL Performance Analyzer went in and did a simulation of that load. And this is trial two. So I have only the misbehaving statements in that report, and it's expected that they are worse now in trial two than they were with the recording on the live system. <clears throat> So you have our categories here, like the net impact on a statement basis. How bad is it compared to the live one? If I click now on the SQL ID of that statement, a C set 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 one, I get the statement in clear text. In the middle of the screenshot, you see also the execution frequency. This gives you a good indi uh, indication how often the statement is executed while you captured it on the live system. You see the categories like elapsed time, CPU and buffer gets, you see the arrow going down. That means it's worse than before. Parsing in 19C increased a little bit, not significantly here. 
user IO is the same. So, okay, what do I do with that information now? Let's go a step forward. In the same report, when we scroll down, we would see also the plan changes because when you look at the very right side to the column new plan, you see a yes. So it got also a new plan. So maybe this is the reason for the change here. I see in the same report, plan before, plan after. But we can use that. Let's say we find a way to fix that, or we have a different idea. We'll show you what we think, how you fix this but we can continuously use that feature, the SQL Performance Analyzer, because what we do now is next thing is we do a change and it could be anything. It could be an init or a parameter, SQL performance, uh, SQL plan management, whatever, doesn't matter. We revisit it again. So we implement the change, whatever that is. And then we do another test run with SPA and then we get the results for the second test run and we compare again. And uh, this is something actually uh, I did together with an ACS consultant long time ago uh, when we want to see different uh, init aura parameters and their effects. So we really went in and we tested optimizer mode first rows, uh, first rows 10, first rows 100 and so on versus all rows. We tested tweaks on optimizer index cost adjust because it had a strange value. We tested really in 10% in steps what the effect on the workload is. Of course, this makes only a lot of sense when you have comparable workloads and uh, representing workloads, represent, representative workloads, but um, it's, it's such an ease. And honestly, if you involve me in your reference project and you tell me we have a license for SQL Performance Analyzer or we have a test deployment in the cloud where we can test with. I'm really absolutely happy then because this eases our life a lot in testing and it eases your life a lot as well because we can mitigate the risk significantly with that. And it's easy. So with the new results here, we can go back to our regressed report and then here fix the plan change.